This video is presented to you by General Relativity Explained. This is the first video in the series of learning the mathematics of general relativity. In this video, we are going to learn about expressions, equations and functions. It might sound very simple in terms of the complexities of general relativity. However, I have planned the lesson in such a way so that you learn from the basic root level and it will take you slowly step by step into the complex mathematics of general relativity. So first in this lesson, we will start with what is called an expression, equations and functions. So uh, in mathematics, we come across collection of symbols, numbers, etc. which is called expressions, equations and functions. So expressions are mathematical operators I would say phrases containing numbers, variables, for example, x, y, z, and operators which includes plus, minus, etc. For example, if we consider this to be an expression, and these are all the examples of expressions. Equations are, uh, you know, statements that uh, say, for example, two mathematical expressions are equal to each other. For example, we can combine these uh, various expressions to obtain an equation. So, for example, 3z plus 7 equals to 2x squared minus 1. So, expressions uh, in general by themselves are meaningless. Equations are of fundamental importance because they tell us that what is the relation between different quantities. Now, functions are equations of the form y equals to, uh, for example, something. So, where when we uh, evaluate the right hand side of the equation, we end up with exactly one value of y. So, if we get two or more values of y, then the equation is considered not to be a function. So, this equation y equal to 3x plus 7, for example, is a function. Why? Because uh, any value of x will give only one value of y. For example, y equal to x squared is a not a function. Uh, because there can be two solutions of y for one value of x, right? So, for example, if x equals to 9 uh, can equal, uh, which be, will be equal to uh, 3 or minus 3, the reason is that minus 3 squared gives us 9 and plus 3 squares gives us 9. So, for example, this function y equals to 3x, uh, it tells us that we need to multiply x by 3 to find the corresponding value of y, right? So, if you let x equals to the whole numbers of the value, say for example this, 0 to 5, we get the values of y as this one. Uh, for 0, we get 0, then for 1, we get 3, for 2, we get 6, and so on. So, this is a basic idea, what are expressions, equations, and how functions really behave. So, we turn the page to the next part, and for example, we see a simple function, y equals to x squared. So, what happens is that if we take the value of y equals to minus 3 or, you know, uh, the values of y, we can let x equals to the whole number minus 3 or plus 3. So just let us forget that a negative number multiplied by negative number gives equals to a positive number. So, this is how the table would look like, minus 3 squared, minus 2 squared, because the, uh, you know, function itself says that it will take value which is x squared. Okay, so here we will see a function of five variables. As you can see, uh, there are five variables which are involved in this. So, um, here if we say, for example, take the values of A, B, C and D to be 1, 2, 3, 4 variables, then uh, we can find out the values by plugging in this and then we calculate the value of 6.66 and so we get something which is close to 27.96. This is just an example that how multiple variables and plugging the value gives us the function. Now, uh, one thing this is very important, let us remember that function is often denoted by the letter f. So, if you find in a textbook that a function f does this, that of the other, so you should not be astonished. You'll also see often functions are written as this, y is to y equals to y, y of x, y equals to t of x and y equals to m of x. So, all these three meaning are the same, which means that y is a function of x. In this example, because the value of y only depends on x, we say that y is a one function to one 
is a function of one variable. Alternately, if we get values like this, so y equals to y of a, b, c, etc., is a function of several variables. So y is a function of a, b, and c. In these examples, we say y is a function of three variables. So we can see few examples. For example, this one u equals to x squared plus 5x. We say u equals to u of x or u equals to f of x. Uh, that is, u is a function of x. If you get k, a is equal to sine of b, we will soon deal with trigonometric functions in our course. So we say that q is equal to q of t, or we can just say that uh, a is a function of b. Similarly, if we get a equals to 4r plus p square minus b, we say that a is a function of r, p, b, or uh, a is a function of f, r, p, b. That is uh, what we can say that basically, uh, you know, uh, this is a function of r, p, and b. Now, we recognize when thing is a function, we need to acquire at least a basic sense of its underlying structure. I mean, so whenever we meet a function for the first time, we should ask ourselves a very few simple questions along the lines. For example, how does the function change if the variables change? Does it ever equal to zero? Does it give meaningful answer for all variables, etc.? So let us few, see a few functions. If you see y equals to 2fx, what does it implies is that y becomes bigger as x becomes bigger. y is proportional to x, which is Say, uh, you know, denoted by this uh, proportional symbol. When the value of x equals to 0, then y equals to 0, and there is a value of y, and there is every value of x. So, what I was telling is that uh, in case that we get a function, we ask those questions that how does the function change? How does it ever equal to 0? So, you see that these are the few examples which actually tells how the function behaves and what, what, what is dealt with. We take few more examples. For example, y equal to x squared, it implies that y becomes bigger as x becomes bigger. Because y is a, a function of x squared, also uh, y also becomes largely larger as x negatively increases because we know that minus times minus gives a plus. For example, here I have shown that x equals to minus 1 and y equals to 1. x equals to 5 if y equals to 25 and so on. So because y is a function of x squared, uh, y grows much faster than x and is not proportional to x when x equals to 0, y equals to 0 and there is a value of y for every value of x. We move on to the further example where we find y equals to 1 by x. So here we can, it also implies y becomes smaller as x becomes bigger. y never equals 0. When x equals to 0, uh, the function becomes impossible to calculate. That is, we call it undivide because dividing by 0 is undivide, not possible. Therefore, there is a value of y for every value of x except when x equals to 0. Because if we get x equals to 0, it becomes basically undefined. Now, see, we use this famous, uh, uh, you know, uh, equation that is the Lorentz transformation. And what we see is that in Lorentz transformation, this is a Lorentz factor which is denoted by the uh, gamma sign and it is uh, extensively used into Lorentz transformation. So you see C is the speed of light and it is a constant and V is the relative velocity between inertial frames of reference so that C, V is less than C. So you can see that if, you know, this is written as this one, Y equals to uh, F of V. Uh, so just by uh, observing this function, we see that when V equals to zero, then b by c whole squared also equals to 0. That means this factor becomes equals to 1. As v increases, then gamma will also increase. But remember that for ordinary small velocities, the value will be 0. I'm so sorry I have written the bottom line right at the beginning. So I just wanted to tell that for ordinary velocities, that means for example a car which is traveling at 50 miles per hour, etc., the value of v by c whole squared will become very small. I mean to say it is negligible and gamma will only be a tiny bit more than 1, right? So only as V approaches C, uh, the gamma will start increasing and gamma cannot be equal to 0 because the numerator is a non-zero and it's a constant, hence this will be equal to 1. Okay, so we will now see uh, just few examples of using those functions and how it looks like graphs, right? 
So let us see the first graph how it looks like. So we see the x y axis and this one. So uh, this is something we get when we plot y equals to 2x and this one we get a kind of a this kind of a shape when we plot y equals to 2x squared and we get this one and we get something like this and we get something like this when we get y equals to 1 by x and we get something like a sack a kind of a 3d shape when we using z equals to x squared plus y squared. Now you see this graph nicely illustrate the uh, properties that we listed. So the first two functions are valid at x equals to 0. So this one and this one, these both are valid x equals to 0. Meaning that the function have values at this point. But this is not the case for y equals to 1 by x. Right, so where the curve does not pass through x equals to 0. Instead the curve approaches the y axis but never actually meets it which is technically we call asymptotic curve which we will deal later and there is also a function of the variable for example this one which looks like in three dimension space so functions of two variables do not produce curves instead they produce something like a back shaped surface which we have seen right here so if we take forward with this function we we, we can write a general formula y equals to mx plus c some books write equals to y equals to something else so just denote that this one uh, uh, y equals to ax plus b is also written. So y is basically gradient and this is the y-intercept. So that the gradient when we uh, write y equals 2x is 2. Similarly functions, uh, yeah, so these are the functions say y equal to 0.7x or minus 2 at this, this, this. So what it actually means um, are all equations they produce a straight line and these are the gradient 0 0.7 minus 4, 37. So now we need to look at a different thing which is differential calculus to find out the changing of the gradient of the curves say for example y equals to x squared which we will definitely deal in the later part of this lesson because I am making this lesson step by step also it sounds very funny that we are starting with the very basics but this would ultimately lead to understanding general relativity's complex mathematics much easier. So now it is the time to take a quick wrap. And let's see what are the things that we learned. We learned about expressions, equations, and functions. We also learned about examples of functions, different examples of functions, and finally, how these functions look like in different graphs that we have taken. So, we take a pause for the first lesson of general relativity's mathematics. We started with the very basics. I hope you like this lesson because this is a very first lesson, so it might be very common for everybody. Do let me know your comment on the comment section. Do like, subscribe for this channel General Relativity Explained because this is the only channel which is exclusively dedicated only in learning or teaching General Relativity, the mathematics, the science, the cosmology, everything which is related to Einstein General Theory of Relativity. Do not forget to click on the all notification so that you get all the notification from General Relativity Explained. Thank you very much. My name is Sean Ak. I'm signing off, promising you to come back with yet another video. Till then, goodbye and best wishes. This channel is dedicated towards teaching Einstein's general theory of relativity and related subjects. For any further queries or suggestions, feel free to write at generalrelativityexplained at gmail.com. Thank you for watching.